Hello everybody and welcome to a retrospective discussion on Breath of the Wild. Today we are looking at Breath of the Wild six years on before Tears of the Kingdom comes out and I'm joined by a fan favourite, David. How are you David? I'm doing very well. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm I'm good. Thank you for thanks for uh, coming on and talking about Breath of the Wild, one of uh, the greatest games ever made, in my opinion. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It's a very um, very influential game as well, especially like in the, like with like Elden Ring and such. But uh, yeah, very happy to to talk about it. Weird that it's been six years as well. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, it is. It, it it does because we were just starting. Well, we were basically in our like our second, second semester. semester. Of- of the college first year of college i think yeah 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 and uh now i'm 25 <laughs> and i'm nearly 26 <laughs> yeah which is so weird but yeah so today we're just gonna sit down reminisce about breath of the wild because both of us absolutely adore the game david how how long did you put into this game it was like 150 hours or something wasn't it the 200 hours yeah, yeah i i, I, I put think... it like 130 or something yeah, it's it's crazy. Like that might be the most amount of time. Well, I I can never verify this because games I played all the time when I was younger. But I don't have mm. any way to track how long I played them. But in terms of ones that I can track, I think I've played Breath of the Wild more as a single game than any other. I'd have to check that. M- maybe Medieval Two on Steam. I've played more, but two hundred hours for a single game is pretty. Uh, it's pretty intense. So I've played it a lot. Yeah, really I thought I, I thought you were talking about Medieval Two. And I was like, "Oh no, the yeah, like the yeah, PS1 yeah, game. yeah, yeah, <laughs> Total War, yeah, <laughs> sorry, Total like, War. Wait, you played over two hundred hours of like a four-hour-long game? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I'm just gonna take you back to a time when I thought I was too cool for Nintendo. Not, not, not that I thought, not that I thought I was too cool for Nintendo. Uh." I had just come off, uh, come home from holidays. I had a bit of money left over. I went over to America and transferred a load of euros over to dollars. Came home, had some dollars left over. So I put them back into euros and bought myself a Wii U. This was 2014, I believe. And I was right up Nintendo's arse at that stage. I loved it. And then I was like, I, I, within six to eight months, I had played all the good games on the Wii U because realistically, there's like 20 good games on the Wii U. So I played all them games, and then next of all, I heard Breath of the Wild, or whatever it was called back then. The new Zelda game is launching in 2015 on the Wii U, so I was so happy. I was like, okay, I'll hold on to my Wii U. And then uh, Breath of the Wild got delayed, and then they also announced that it's coming to the new console. So then I traded in my Wii U because I was annoyed at Nintendo. And what did I do with that money that I uh, traded in my Wii U, or the money I got off my Wii U? I bought a 3DS. So I was right up Nintendo's arse at that stage. and. that was kind of my my introduction to Breath of the Wild pre-release. I didn't really look at anything. I and I never really care about pre-release stuff. Like I've even s- steered clear of all the Tears of the Kingdom stuff. I've watched maybe one trailer, like a trailer and a half maybe. But uh, going into Breath of the Wild, I didn't really know much about it. I was just really excited. So David, what was your experience with Breath of the Wild pre-release? Did you watch any trailers? Were you interested in it? Well. Discuss. I wasn't actually that big into Zelda overall. Boo. Before came out. I know, yeah. Um, this man's never played Majora's Mask. Well, I did play the 3DS version for a bit and got halfway through. I need to go back to it, and I will at some point. Um, but I didn't play... The first Zelda I played was Ocarina of Time on the 3DS in 2016. I got it for like a graduation thing, like a graduation present. I got a 3DS, and I played that, and I was completely taken with it. I thought it was the most one of the most amazing games I'd ever played. It moved me emotionally. Just everything just clicked with me. I know for a lot of people, they knew this already, or maybe they played Link to the Past. And it's like that. I haven't played any of those games. So I that got me into Zelda. and then, But I wasn't following the pre-release of Breath of the Wild that much. I knew about some of the Zelda games like uh, Skyward Sword. But from what I saw of Skyward Sword, it just looked kind of boring and kind of like, you know, bleh. And when I went back to play other Zelda games, like I played a bit of Wind Waker, a bit of Twilight Princess, I just found them so constricting. Like they just wouldn't stop holding your hand. And I'm not one of these people that's like, oh, you know, 
games are too easy or too accessible or anything but they really just wouldn't like it was just boring to play so I, I need to at some stage try and fight through that and play through them but all of that is to say I wasn't actually that hyped for Zelda for Breath of the Wild because I wasn't I've liked Ocarina but that was about it not that I don't like the others but that was Ocarina was the one that really clicked with me but then the hype for Breath of the Wild was more a hype for the game but also hype for the switch itself which was sort of uh the bigger deal i think for me i saw bits of the e3 demo i think it was it 2015 or 2016 i think it was 2015 um and it looked cool you know it looked interesting but it was the nintendo switch 2016 and 2017 trailers that really started to get to me the hype and seeing how they were taking zelda in a new direction there was voice acting now it was so magical and new um and just the environmental things you could do the music in the trailer when link is on the the horse going across the bridge like it was really what's the word it, it did look like something that i hadn't really seen before i'm sure people have played stuff like i don't know witcher 3 or something i don't know lots of big games i haven't played i have to admit um so Needless to say, I'm kind of meandering here. What were you saying? Oh, pre-release, yeah. So that was basically <laughs> it, yeah. I just here I am talking about the rest of Zelda. But the key thing to remember is um, I I was excited, but I wasn't a, a massive Zelda fan the way a lot of other people, like you would be, Adam. So, mm. But I was hyped. So Yeah, see, I, I, I can't really remember being like overly hyped for it. Like I was... Obviously, I was excited for a new console and, you know, a new Zelda game is always great. Well, I think at that stage in my life, I was, firstly, I was the, like, the least into gaming that I had ever been in my life. And also, Zelda kind of has, had th- at that point, has kind of stung me a bit because uh, Skyward Sword really didn't interest me when I got it. Now, in hindsight, playing that game on the on the Switch, it's a lot better on the Switch, first of all. It's a lot like easier, more accessible to play. But uh, back then, that game really didn't do it for me. So my love for Zelda was at an all-time low going into Breath of the Wild. But it also had the excitement of a brand new console, which obviously and and there was something there was something special about the Switch because the Switch wasn't, you know, just a Wii U. I know obviously the Wii U had a gamepad, but like the gamepad was just a glorified controller. But like this was the first time we had ever seen a hybrid console. And just showing all the stuff like, oh, you can take it and play basketball, and then you can play basketball on your Switch in the park. <laughs> like, even though as stupid <laughs> as it sounds, those videos were cool. Oh, so, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So going into it, it was it was the, more the hype of having a new console, and then of course, like you know, a flagship Zelda title on a new console is always going to bring some excitement. So, uh, David, this was even though we were in the same secondary school, we weren't really friends in in school, but uh, obviously in college we both did the same course. So uh, this was kind of also at the start of our of our friendship that has now gone on for like. I don't know six, six years. years six yeah. years and like we literally talked to each other like every single day without fail yeah. so absolutely yep and it was see growing up i had friends that were into games but i didn't have friends that were into games you know like the way me and you are and it was nice being able to share in that excitement with someone else that was also into games as, as much as i am like i knew obviously i knew a lot of people that were getting switches and getting zelda but you know, none of them were, you know, hardcore, hardcore gaming fans like like the way we are. So that that was also just kind of a bit of a hype moment go, going into it. So I'll take you back to March 3rd, 2017. So when I lived with my parents, I lived f- literally five minute walk from, from my local GameStop. And the reason why I'm telling this story first, because my story is not as interesting as yours, David. So I'll just get mine out of the way. <laughs> so... March 3rd, 2017, I woke up. I think GameStop at that stage maybe opened at 9, but it might have been half 9 or 10. So I was waiting around, and, you know, I woke up real early. I was like a kid on Christmas. We were were supposed to, I I assume we were supposed to be in college, 
but I didn't go in. Uh, I don't think you did either, and I don't think I went in for, for a couple of days after that. So uh, I woke up really excited, probably like 6 a.m., and I just floating around, farting around, just trying to waste time until I could walk over. And then I walked over, and say GameStop was opening at 10 o'clock. I got there at like a couple of minutes past 10, and the fucking shop wasn't open. And I was like, oh, no, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? So then I went into uh, Dunn's, which was like a supermarket, and uh, got some pastries or some crap, and then walked out, saw it was open. Got my Switch, walked home, went into my room, set up the Switch, and I played Breath of the Wild for, I think, about 20 hours in the first two, two and a half days. So uh, it, it was just a magical experience. I don't want to go too far into actually playing the game because, David... I want you to tell your amazing story of you getting your Switch. (laughs) Yeah, so the story of Breath of the Wild in terms of our experience with it will forever be linked with, no pun intended, geez, um, linked with the getting the Switch. So I also live near enough to the GameStop that's local to Adam, or was local to Adam. I mean, they're shutting down now, of course. But Yeah, yeah, um, rip. I know, rip indeed. R.I.P. in peace. (laughs) Um, but in my head, I thought that the GameStop that was nearer to our, to the university that we went to was the same distance. And I don't know why, but I (laughs) pre-ordered it there. Um, and that specific day, I think we didn't have any lectures. I'd like to think I didn't skip, but I may have skipped. So I don't know. Nerd. Um, (laughs) But it was actually like a thunderstorm that day. Mm -hmm. So Adam, obviously, as he said, he could just, you know, uh, meander over and get it. I could have also done that because there are buses that go from our front door, from our estate, yeah. to the front door of the shopping center where GameStop is and back. But instead, I had to walk down about 10, 15 minutes to the bus stop, get the bus from there, then walk another 10 minutes to uh, the shopping center where the other GameStop was in the pouring rain. I get there. I had pre-ordered a Pro Controller as well and a Nintendo Switch Breath of the Wild case. They didn't have the case yet. They said it'll be there later that day so i was like oh do you know what? i'll just i'll get the switch now (laughs) so i get the switch it's thundering down rain i have it in a gamestop paper bag i get back onto the (laughs) wait at the bus stop in the rain just standing there because the bus is only every hour um unlike the one that would take me to the other game stuff every like every seven minutes minutes, oh yeah yeah even shorter actually probably every seven minutes so eventually i'm on the bus get home another 10 15 minutes I'm walking towards the house and just as I'm in the the car, like the, uh, the, like right at the porch of the house, the bag is so wet that it breaks (laughs) and the switch falls into a puddle (laughs) in the box now. So the switch was fine, but forever I've, uh, I mean, we still have that switch box, actually. The the corner of it is sort of like (laughs) wet and just... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you get a brand new 330 euro console and it gets dropped in a puddle before you even open the box. I know, it's great. But I will say, and I don't know how you feel about this, Sam, but I even pre-ordering games nowadays, um, I do kind of like that journey that you take when you're, you know, going out and about and you're you're doing something purely for fun or that you're 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 getting up early to go somewhere because you're gonna get a game, if you know what I mean. Mm. But it would have been better, I guess, if it hadn't fallen into a puddle. But, yeah. you know, it is what it is. <laughs> and then I got to play Breath of the Wild. And as I said, I, I like to think we didn't have any other things on that day. And it was raining outside. So I could play and play without feeling guilty whatsoever. Played it for a good, I'd say, seven or eight hours that day. Um, then we went down. Actually, I got a lift down to the shop later that evening. They still didn't have the uh, Switch case in in uh, the the breath of the wild one in stocks so they said instead do i want to get just a regular switch case which i still have to this very day and um, which is fine but you know i would have liked the breath of the wild one but you know it is what it is but it was a very eventful day as you said <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i have the breath of the wild case as well so uh yeah just just uh, this this is the thing okay so when it comes to games, I, I think I've said this before on the channel. I've definitely said it on streams. I'm definitely more of a feeling orientated person. So even though David, like there, you have these people that are just like, they have these encyclopedic knowledge of like game series. Okay. And I've played 
pretty much every single Zelda game at least once. Like, I think Oracle of Ages, Oracles of Season, and uh, Diminish Cap are probably the only three that I haven't played. And so to me, Zelda is Zelda is a feeling. That's why I love Zelda. Firstly, Link is green, my favorite color. Link was left-handed. I am also left-handed. And That's am I. Yeah, Majora's Mask was the first game I can ever remember playing. And to this day, it's still my favorite game. So Zelda is just a feeling for me that I just can't describe. Like other, it's it simply, I can't describe it. It's just a feeling. And since I never had that, like obviously Majora's Mask was the first game I can remember playing, but like I was probably four and all I was doing was sitting there watching my brother and my dad play it. Or I was eventually old enough to read the manual so I could help my brother play it. And I get to hold the controller, you know, for 10 minutes. So to be honest, and it, and, to, and going into all the other Zelda games, firstly, we didn't have a GameCube. So I played uh, Wind Waker on the Wii U. And then Twilight Princess was the same. My brother just hogged the Wii. And I was basically just watching him play Twilight Princess. So I... Even though I love Zelda, I never had that Zelda experience. Getting Zelda on launch day and just being so excited to play it. And Breath of the Wild just brought back all of that, like, just the feeling of me playing Majora's Mask when I was a kid, when I first played it. Because back in the day, playing Majora's Mask, walking out into the terminal field, and you just, you, you think that the map is massive now, obviously, in hindsight, the map in that game is you know, comically small compared to other games. But once you, you know, do that little intro in Breath of the Wild, you walk out and then the piano music plays and you walk up and you see the whole landscape. And then uh, that's all you see there is the, the Great Plateau. You don't see the rest of the world. And it just had that feeling just built up inside me of, Adam, you are four or five years old, experiencing Majora's Mask for the first time. And not only was that feeling there, the game looked gorgeous. I remember it not running too well in certain parts, especially in like uh, the the Korok Forest, Forbidden or, Forest or, yeah, yeah, Forbidden Forest. Yeah, it was it was pretty forest, rough yes. at times. Now it's pretty it's pretty good. It, like it got patched eventually, and it was it was you know it's pretty stable. But like, not only was the world expansive, it was just a new way of experiencing Zelda, and not like you can see the world, you can go to a spot you can explore you can if you see something you can do it as todd howard would say but uh the thing is it's like the whole game was just built around this sandbox of a world that was just like it was a playground that's that's what it was and i think initial like my first you know couple of hours with the game that's what i noticed was that oh this world is truly truly interactive you see an apple on a tree you can shoot it down you see a squirrel, you can light a fire arrow up and shoot them, and then you get a cooked piece of meat. Like, if there's some bacoblins down down a hill, you can chop a tree down, and the tree will roll down the hill, and it can kill them. And that was the thing that stood out to me straight away. So, David, how did you feel when you first played Breath of the Wild? As you said, the initial stinger when you get out there and you see the the vast world in front of you, and like doom or death mountain and such um and the music that plays um the first thing that happened to me was i saw those two i don't know if they have a specific name but they're the two giant mountains that are like there's like a a narrow valley between them and i saw that and i said i want to get to the very top of those straight away um which i couldn't do i had to go to the great plateau first which is perfect i believe i believe they're called the dueling peaks dueling peaks right bro thank you i believe um I think that it's ringing a bell. I think that is what they're called. Um, the other thing I did, which may have not not soured the initial impressions, but I probably shouldn't have done this, was I had heard before the game came out that you could go straight for Ganon as soon as yeah. you were finished the, the Great Plateau. So I went through the Great Plateau, really enjoyed it, and then I went straight for <laughs> uh, Ganon, and I actually got in there. Um, but it wasn't that fun, to be honest. I also probably I just learned the game. It was really cool that I could get in there, and then I realized you had to fight all the forms yeah. of Ganon first. So I was like, "Oh, I have to fight like four, like eight bosses." So then I left. I got some really high quality gear, but it was really cool that I could do that, and I had that level of freedom. And I, 
I didn't really follow the objectives that much. It was all very much, as you said, exploring the sandbox. And it's funny that I've played the game for 200 hours and I very specifically have one memory that I'll, I'll always remember. Uh, one of the best times I've had in a game is when there were some apples in a cart and I knocked them over and I saw there was a fire there that some Bo or whatever had set up. So I said, I'll pick up these uh, apples. And then from my inventory, I threw it next to the uh, fire and then it was a roasted apple. And I was like, this is just like I, I had come up with that myself and it worked. The game had it built in that you could do that. And things like, for example, um, I was um, uh, if you're in very cold areas and then I equipped a yeah. fire arrow or fire arrow or fire sword and it re- saved my life. Or when I uh, went up to the very first um, divine beast that I went to was Va Meadow, the one that is flying where the, Rito, I think they're called. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I hadn't got the. Uh, I believe there's some. There's a gear you can wear that keeps you warm when you're doing that mission or that let that dungeon, um, or whatever it is that you need. Whereas I didn't have it yet, so I had a limited supply of um recipes that would give me that. So I was actually under a time limit on that mission on that um on that dungeon, and. It's the fact that the game has so many of those like emergent gameplay yeah, scenarios. Yeah, that's, that's that's the word, emergent gameplay. I know, yeah, it's a bit of a buzzword, but it has it has a you know they're buzzwords for a reason. I yeah, mean, yeah. They, they work. Um, so the fact that I seem to be, I'm sure I wasn't, but I seem to be one of the only people. Like whenever I heard other people talking about the game, I'd always see them wearing special gear to get through that section. I was like, oh, when I did it, I had to do it under a time limit, which is an additional challenge that not everyone will see. The same way, for example, if you if you go to the, to Vameto last, you don't have to worry about that. Or if you go in a different order, I know a lot of games are like this, but in Breath of the Wild, it really, really feels. And I know lots of games have the phys- physics engine, whereas this also has the chemistry engine, which is where all that you know fun stuff and elemental stuff comes in. So that was probably the thing that sticks out to me the most when I think about Breath of the Wild and my experience with it was just those little things that when I thought about something or going somewhere like again, it's like the Todd Howard meme where it's like, if you see that peak, you can go there. Yeah, yeah. But in Breath of the Wild, you actually, it feels like you are built, like it's built for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause in Skyrim, you're literally like, you're, you're walking jumping backwards, at a jumping backwards on your horse up a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. Or awkwardly glitching your way yeah. out through the geometry. Whereas the Breath of the Wild, it really is built all around that. Um, and I hadn't really seen that before in a game. I'm sure there have been games that have been like that, but and I know this isn't, I hate to sound like a a Nintendo sort of shill here, but when Nintendo does it, it's usually, yeah. you know, it's done really well. Yeah, Not always, but usually. Yeah, yeah. in most cases, it. if Nintendo attempts something, they like, and it's the fact that this was their first open world game. Like, yeah, it's like. And it's so AAA, like for, in yeah. the context of when it came out, like they put all their resources into it. Can I just say as well, one thing I was, when I was playing Breath of the Wild, even at the time, I remember playing it. And even with my limited knowledge of Zelda, I knew obviously about the heritage of The Legend of Zelda. Like I say, I haven't played many of the games. I obviously know about the games in the series. Yeah. Like I'm not, it's not like me with Pokemon where I have no idea what's going on with Zelda. I obviously, I'm familiar with them. And I thought, weird to think that Nintendo, this, if you went back to 1986 or 7, whenever the original Legend of Zelda came out and you said to people, or the fact, like the idea that that same company is making this today in the same series at this scale, and this level of care, it's so inspiring, I think. It's so impressive that Nintendo can do that the way not many other companies can do it. Mm. Now, I know there's stuff like Capcom and Konami are sort of getting a bit better. But Capcom, especially recently, have, have um, been doing it. But Nintendo have always, to me anyways, have seemed to consistently do that. Um, so... That, that was my, as I said, my first impressions of Breath of the Wild were just the freedom that you get. And not just freedom to, you know, spec your character however you want, but more so if you think about something, it's very likely you can do it, which I think is something that a lot of games could uh, could learn from. And I guess they are. Yeah. You know, recent games. Yeah, see, I think one thing, I, I think something like that, I don't want to pull this card, but I think something like that won't be as groundbreaking to somebody who doesn't play a lot of games because how many times in a game have you 
seen a door that you wanted to go in or a passage that you wanted to pass through, but there was like a little box in your way. And it's like, my character can jump over that box, but the game just doesn't let you do it, you know? Yeah. And them, them kind of like, when Breath of the Wild re- like just showed that, like, if you want to do it, you can. And the game has all of these little, all these little systems that are working together so that you can just, you can, it, like, as you said, if you, if you think it, you can do it. And I, to be honest, I, I can't think of any any other game that does it as well as Breath of the Wild. Like, I if you if you go to other sort of open world sandbox games, like you have Just Cause, I guess, but that's obviously very built towards the action. Yes. Like yeah. in in Just Cause, if you want to attach a tank to a plane and launch the plane off and then shoot from the tank midair, you can. But it's every it's almost like from what I've played of Just Cause, like all of the systems are built to just create carnage. Whereas in Breath of the Wild, like the systems are built so that the weather affects you, or so that, uh, like you can you control you, you can set a piece of meat on fire and it will it will cook, cook or it, as you yeah. said, you can roast an apple or you know stuff like that. So I think even like thinking back on Breath of the Wild, and I have played a bit of it since. I've like dipped in and out and then I started a hardcore playthrough recently. Uh that like that's the thing that sticks out and the can I just say though about cuz when you make that just cause connection first of all I think that's a really good um a good connection because it has a lot of that organic stuff in there or tools there for you but as you say it is very much just about causing mayhem and wacky stuff to happen. The only thing about Breath of the Wild I think those sort of elements as the game goes on seem to take a bit of a back step or back a uh, back seat towards i mean certain things like obviously fire swords or ice swords are still important throughout the very end of the game but like you never really have a need to roast apples beyond necessarily the start of the game the early yeah. hours yeah um so i do think again i don't want to get jump into like critical analysis or anything but for well, for, that's, what, that's ter- what we're here to do I suppose if we're reminiscing now, I'm reminiscing now thinking about it, that I can see why for Tears of the Kingdom people might, or a, a direction they could go is, and it seems like they're doing this from what people have said, like that sort of the the systems there, the chemistry engine, the physics engine will play a much larger role. Like a big yep. part of it is like building stuff. Don't know. I mean, this is where I'm going to be a bit hypocritical. When I saw some of the the trailer release, I thought, oh, if this is going to be too open-ended, where you're given a bit too much to do, and it's all up to you to make it, I'd be like, mm, I don't know. Yeah, I personally don't creative. like. Yeah, I personally don't sense. like doing building vehicles and stuff. But we'll we'll just have to wait and see. Exactly. Yeah, but I just it's funny that you said because I just thought about that. I I do think the systems in place are really good. I just think that maybe, hopefully, for Tears of the Kingdom, they uh they do even more stuff with them. Yeah, well, I think if if we're talking about the systems in Breath of the Wild, like obviously the most controversial system was the weapon durability system. Yes. And for me, I personally like it because it forces you to use different things. Like you're not just locked into using one sword because that's what would happen. And especially on hardcore on hardcore mode, it it makes you really really take into account your environment. Like if you have trees around, if there's rocks, can you freeze something? Can you blow something up? And because you don't want to waste your good weapons on like a cobbler, you know, things like that. Yeah. So when it comes to like the system, obviously it's the most controversial system. I I like it, but I think going forward into Tears of the Kingdom, since they are leaning into the, they're leaning into the, uh, the, the sandbox nature of the game. I actually wonder, and I, I'm going to put out a prediction here, that the weapon durability system won't be as much as a controversial issue because the game is going to, well, so far, looks like it's going to be extremely sandbox. So then a weapon durability system almost fits it better. Because I think the weapon durability system at its best is when it forces you to go outside your comfort zone to, to use your environment or use a weapon that maybe you wouldn't have or use a weak weapon that because you're, you literally don't have any other choice. So I'm kind of hoping that in the new one in, in tears of the kingdom, that the weapon durability durability system will 
kind of shine because of how sandboxy it is. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from with that. And I do think in the in Breath of the Wild, I didn't mind the the weapon durability. I should say as well, I'm a very laid back kind of guy, both in real life, but with games as well. It's rare that I genuinely get really annoyed or frustrated with a game. Um, Unless it's Salt and Sacrifice. Yeah, or Callisto Protocol, um, which I, I literally... Oh, fuck. <laughs> I was like <laughs> screaming into it. <laughs> I know. Um, but broadly speaking, I'm generally very, you know, like whatever. But I did find weapon durability at the start. I liked it, especially in the Great Plateau. As I said, all the systems, I think, work brilliantly at the start. Probably a combination of you just being introduced to them and it feels very novel, but also it's more survivalist at the start. Yeah. But eventually the combat becomes a bit of a joke and you have so many of these like really powerful weapons. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. I do think as it goes on, it sort of outlives its usefulness in terms of like, if I have six of these really powerful like knight swords, why do I just have to keep cycling through them? Why can't I just have the one knight sword? And also when you eventually do get the master sword or if you get the master sword or find it, I know it doesn't break, but it could have been an interesting parallel if the master sword didn't need to be recharged i'm sure they didn't want people as you said they wanted people to engage with the different weapons but by the time you get the master sword well most people get the master sword you're probably well i'd have well now again saying that i don't know how soon you could get the master sword maybe i should do a, a master run like well i want to do one before tears of the kingdom on master mode and see how fast i can get the master sword and such yeah but i do I, I see. I, I do agree with you that weapon durability in a system, if if Tears of the Kingdom is a lot more systems based or create like crafting based or like they they go into it far more. I don't think it'll be as big an issue for people. I, again, I don't even think it was that big of an issue in the original. I just think after a while there wasn't really any point to it. You have eight copies of the same sword. It's like, well, you know, I'm just still going to use these swords anyways. So that is definitely something that I hope Tears of the Kingdom can. Um, spiff up is the yeah. is the combat and the the weapons and such, which yeah. I, they very well seem to be doing. So. Yeah, well, I think I personally think uh, the best way to improve a durability system is by having like a robust crafting system. Like I'm I'm just thinking like recently like Dead Island Two, that had a durability system. Now you could easily repair stuff for for money. Like it wasn't too big an issue. The things didn't like properly break, but. When when you have like crafting at your disposal, I think it makes the durability a lot a, a lot like easier to bear because you are making like your own custom weapons. So when you make like a super powerful fire sword, you know it's almost expected since you've crafted it that the thing will, you know, lose durability over time if you use it, and then it kind of forces you into you know creating a new weapon or using resources to repair it, and. It kind of looks like they're they're leaning into that now with you know the way you can add all the different things to to the weapons like you can add a stick to a pitchfork to make it into like a really long pitchfork. Yes, yeah, yeah. So we're talking a lot about Tears of the Kingdom, but uh, I, I mean, mean, I mean, it's what, out next what else? Week, yeah, is, yeah, it's out next it's, week. Can I just say as well? It's like personally, just between the two of us, isn't it just wacky to think like it's actually been six years and the sequel is yep. actually out next yeah, week? It's, <laughs> it's, absolutely, it's absolutely weird. Like I, I heard it on a podcast there, it was like. Yeah, Breath of the Wild came out six years ago. I was like, no, it didn't. It came out like three or four. Come on, six. They've been working on this game for six years. But no, six years, which is absolutely crazy. I know, it's just, oh my God. The time, March of Time is forever forward or whatever yes. the expression is. So uh, I think when, when, it comes to, when it comes to Breath of the Wild, since since it was like such a big de- like obviously it is still Zelda at its heart but it is a massive departure from what what the series is known for like the typical four or however many dungeons you know you collect four of or four or six or eight of a certain thing and then you go fight the boss so I know I said the weapon durability system was the most controversial but I actually think what the two most controversial things about the game when it came out were the amount of the amount of shrines. The amount of Korok seeds. Well, firstly, the amount of shrines and how a lot of people thought they felt quite similar. The amount of Korok seeds, which, I mean, I don't really think that's an issue because you don't have to collect them all. And then, finally, and probably the biggest departure is the fact that dungeons don't play like a massive role. Like, you have the Divine Beasts, and I like the story beats around them, but the actual Divine Beasts themselves were pretty lackluster. 
like the dungeons they just felt like large shrines rather than zelda dungeons you know so to be honest like i, I haven't actually in my in my hardcore playthrough i haven't actually gotten to any of the divine beasts and i'm sitting here right now and i can tell you all about like the 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 dungeons in uh ocarina the dungeons in majora's mass the dungeons in twilight princess and some of them in, in skyward sword but i could not tell you other than the look of what the dungeon looked like outside i couldn't tell you what any of these dungeons are about so did you did you and also the boss fights at the end were very easy which i don't really think is too big an issue issue i think most zelda bosses are pretty easy but their designs aren't as cool as the other zelda bosses they're very yeah they're very it's hard for me to even think back i i know I remember broadly what they look like, but yeah. I don't remember anything else. Like no. uh, as opposed to in Ocarina, I remember like the weird giant, well, the giant spider in the tree, and then that weird octopus guy who chases you, and you know the weird tennis match you play with Ganon at the end. <laughs> like <laughs> I remember all of that, but yeah. the bosses here were definitely a bit of a, a bit of a letdown. But I didn't have much to compare them to, I guess, because my experience, as I said, with Zelda was in terms of properly completing the games was just Ocarina of Time. I played yeah. some of the others a little bit, but Ocarina was the one I fully played through. So for me, the car, uh, the Karak seeds, I did at one point want to get all 900 of them just for completion's sake, but I gave up. And also it's clearly, there's meant to be that much that you don't have to consult a guide. You'll always just find them, you know, you're clearly not supposed to get them all. Um, the, I'll go with the dungeons first, the dungeons. So the fact that there's only four, I can see why people would be upset by that. Um, if you compare it to Ocarina, I think has eight dungeons, or it may have more than that, eight or ten. I don't know. It has a lot of dungeons, anyways. I know Majora was actually only had four. I think. Um, I don't know about the others. Zelda dungeons are, of course, quite famous for. I don't know if they gave birth to the when people say dungeons in terms of like a use dungeon as a term for like a, a separate arena, like a, a small like yeah. mini challenge or side quest that you're doing maybe they, they're maybe probably they are, i would imagine it's they might have been the first but i mean zelda like the first zelda kind of had like the dungeons so you know it goes it goes as far back as the nes so it the, definitely does maybe it goes yeah. back for but it definitely goes back to they've always been a part of zelda anyways so in terms of that i can see why people might be upset by that if you don't maybe nintendo's reasoning was that well with all the shrines they sort of make up for that Sometimes I suppose they might if they're a big shrine with lots of different, you know, little challenges that you do. But a lot of, some of the shrines are just kind of, you know, fairly basic. I don't really have an issue with some of the with the shrines. I found it it was as fun to find the shrines as it was to complete them. Sometimes, you know, um, in terms of the dungeons themselves, the only one I properly remember. I remember some of the set pieces, I should say. I remember going up to... I don't remember the names, though. I only know Vamado because it was the first one I did, uh, which is the one that's flying in the air. I remember that because, obviously, I was on the time limit and you were so high up above and you had to use this, like, little galley trolley thing to go from one side of the, the bird to the other. And um, there was a lot of moving uh, the Divine Beast around so that you could make your way through it. So I remember that and thinking that was pretty cool. But beyond that, um, again, I remember the set piece of the giant one. Oh, sorry, spoilers as well. I don't want to. I mean, it's six ah, years no, now. No, it's six I, years I always, on, I know, but I, you never know what people. I don't want to wreck it for people. Although the sequel is literally out in a week, so yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know why you're listening to this if you've never played the game, but <laughs> um, so the one in the desert. The one, the water one, which I actually did enjoy the water one. I've always loved water stuff in games. I love water in real life as well, and I love like the rain and such. Unless it's you know ruining my uh, yeah, Nintendo unless it's Switch box. drowning your Nintendo Switch. <laughs> um, so I actually remember playing that in college in the library, which I shouldn't have been doing, having the Switch in uh, in uh, desktop mode, playing it there when I should have been studying. Um, when you were on one of the ads, you were on a Nintendo ad. And I was like crowd around you, like, come on, guys, let's <laughs> watch on. some Zelda. <laughs> um, so yeah, that and the fourth one. Oh, that's the one that's on the mountain. I think, isn't it the? Yeah, that... to be uh, to be honest, David, I, I'm genuinely I'm struggling. There, there's one in the desert. There's one up in the sky. There's one on the side of a mountain that's like a lizard. And... Yes. Yeah. And the yeah, they're cool set pieces, but 
in terms of gameplay, the only one I really remember fully is Famado, and even then that may be a combination of the fact that it was the first and the yeah. thing I remember about it most, obviously it's high up in the air and the music, which I really, really liked. It's very, um, what's the word? It really feels like you're struggling. The music feels like it's Link really desperately like climbing a thing that's thousands of feet in the air and like one wrong move, you'll just fall all the way to the bottom. And obviously the fact that I keep going on about it, but I was so, I just thought it was so cool that I was under a time limit for that mission. Whereas other people, may not have been and i'm like okay i only have 10 minutes to do this dungeon or 15 minutes so you're kind of under that it's a bit like majora's mask with the time pressure so beyond that though the shrines i should say some of them as i said i enjoyed a lot i don't have a huge amount to compare it to i know some people who are more literate with the zelda franchise it's one of my blind spots that i need to go back and you know play through them all just a lot of in a lot of nintendo stuff outside of the mario series I'm actually quite bad on in terms of not having played. I've barely played Metroid. I barely played Zelda. I barely played, po- well, I haven't played Pokemon really at all. So I don't have much to compare it to. I know some people are upset by, or have pointed out that it's not really a traditional Zelda game. It doesn't have the same dungeon style. And I can see that from my experience with Ocarina, but I haven't played enough of the others to make a, ju- a judgment one way or the other. Um, but all I can say is, cool set pieces but in terms of gameplay beyond Vamado I can't really if you were to ask me like genuinely what even their names are I'm just yeah you know I can't remember and like exactly yeah like even the shrines I think the the shrines I I enjoyed them uh I I completed all of them like I got the the hero's tunic or whatever it was for completing them yeah and uh there's a few well there's a few standout ones, well, one in particular, and it was one where you had to use the gyro on the controller to control a platform to roll a ball. Yes. And yeah. I was really struggling. But then I realized, and again, this just goes back to like, if you think you can do it, you probably can. I just flipped the controller upside down and then the platform was flat. So I didn't have to worry about anything. So then you could just like guide it directly into the hole. So like, that's kind of the standout ones. And then like, See, I think this is I think this is an overall I'm not even sure if you would call it a flaw, but almost like you know, you kind of have to pick your poison when you make an open world game. So, with open world games obviously they they need to be populated to to some extent and unfortunately developers don't have unlimited time, people and money to make everything unique and like all of the shr- a lot of the shrines feel the same. Like they all kind of blend into one. A, f- a few of them have like like there's a lot of them. You remember the constellation kind of puzzles where you had to roll the balls into different into different yes, holes and yeah. then line them up. And then there was the challenge or the combat challenge ones, which were fighting those fucking well, what you call them? Uh, I don't even know what the oh, enemies guardians are. Yeah, or... the, the mini guardians. They're mini not guardians. full guardians, but whatever combat they're guardians, called. Yeah. yeah. So there's them, and then like a lot of them do fall into the same thing: push a ball into a hole. But I think that's just a drawback of open world games. And I think if everything else around it is really strong, and I think Elden Ring is like just just another example of... Elden Ring is a absolutely brilliant game. Like 10 out of 10, brilliant. But like if you really dive deep into it and you start to pick pick apart the things that, that aren't good in it, Elden Ring falls into the same trap of having the... Uh, what are they called? I don't know what they were called, but basically they were the the dungeons that had bosses at the end of them. But like they were the the oh, oh yeah, I, uh, the catacombs like the, or something. Catacombs, yeah, or were the crypts or something. Yeah, something or... like that. Where where it's like you you have to populate if you want the world to be as vast and open and explorable, you have to populate it with stuff like that. And again, with Elden Ring and Breath of the Wild, just like you said earlier. Uh, discovering where the catacomb was or discovering where the shrine was was like it, it was half of the fun and it really uh like a reward even though even though the, some of the shrines themselves might have felt repetitive it still felt rewarding yes yeah and then the the dungeons i mean i don't really have anything to say about them other than i like, can't really remember them like whatsoever and then the boss fights in the dungeons just again to me, they they all just blend into one. They're all some like kind of mini-looking Ganon blight version and this and that. And 
you know, deflectors, laser beam, or whatever, and then that's it's, it. Yeah, it's they're very. I don't know that they are very much a. It feels very much as you said. You you don't have infinite time, resources, money, manpower, etc. Um. So it just I don't mean this to be bad, but it sometimes does feel like when they got to the boss design stage, they were just like, eh. Yeah. It's like, what can we do? Um, and I don't mean that to be bad. I mean, they've put, clearly put so much work into mm. every other aspect, and I'm sure they put work into the bosses as well, but they just don't. Like, even me remembering Vamado, I remember the name, and that was the first one I did, the first of the uh, the first of the dungeons, because it's so, you can see it in the distance. Uh, well, you can see all of them in the distance. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is very right cool, up, by the yeah. way. Like, with the, the draw distance and all, like, it, it naturally draws you over there. But... I did that. I think I was only playing the game about 15 or 20 hours. Like it was within the first week of the game or the first few days I was playing the game and we were in college and in second semester we were actually fairly uh, light on lecture like time. So we had a lot of free time. Again, I wasn't skipping class. I don't think. Um, I hope not. But the that was at the start and then there was probably something like a 30 or 40 hour gap before I went and did the other three. But I still remember that one the most, the first one. Um, and again, that could just be because it was the first one and that it's a great set piece. You're flying up in the air. Again, they're all great set pieces, but I don't know beyond that. But in terms of the gameplay mechanics within, I don't. Or here's another way of putting it. If you were just inside the dungeons and you couldn't see the outside, so you couldn't see that you were high in the air or surrounded by water or in the desert or on a vo- uh, volcano, how would you know which one you're in? They all look the same. Yeah. I think. Whereas in Ocarina, you've got the Spirit Temple, the Shadow Temple, the you know all these other temples, um, and they may be like Fire Temple, Water Temple. The Water Temple does kind of suck, but um, I'm also a sucker for you know elemental stuff. I love like the red area, which is where all the fire enemies live. The ice area is the blue area. You know, I love all that sort of stuff. But and I think. Breath of the Wild does a good job of sort of not being too video gamey with that, but it's still in terms of the dungeons, which, as you said, are seem to be the biggest, um, the biggest issue people have. I I can see it. I don't think gameplay wise they were the highlight for me the way they would be in other Zelda games. I presume. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I like. They weren't the, bad or anything. The four bosses them. and the the dungeons in Majora's Mask are just absolutely iconic. So like like that's that's the sort of for me in my mind that's that's the base or that's that's obviously what you have to compare it to it, it for me anyway and uh, it just doesn't even hold a candle to it and I think while we're on the topic of bosses I think it's the combat in this game is uh, it's interesting like so as we said you have all of these systems you have bows you have shields you have barrels you can blow up rocks you can throw at them you can throw bombs you can you know roll a tree down a hill so like you have all these environmental parts of the combat that i think really go a long way in making this combat feel a lot better than it actually is because when you get down to and i'm not saying that zelda ever really had amazing combat like obviously it it, you know pioneered the z targeting and all that so it's quite it's at it's the very, important and yeah, at the very least, not, it's very influential, but it was never... It's been bested by lots of other yeah, games since. Yeah, yeah, and like, like a, Ze- a Zelda combat system to me is lock on, maybe jump out of the way of an attack, and then just mash the attack button. And Breath of the Wild kind of fixes this again. I said, they have all them systems that make it really interactive and fun. And you also have a good parry mechanic, which feels quite satisfying. And actually, I actually quite struggle to, to I struggle a lot to get to get the parry system down. But when when you get down to the one on one combat with a cobbling, that's when it actually I I actually think the combat feels worse than other Zelda games. The the one on one sword combat for me, it's it's just it's like your swings are like really slow or something. And they have like a weird, almost, I don't know, would you say, not not a delay, but maybe a wind up. Like when you press the attack button, it's like slash, stop, slash, stop, slash. Whereas in like the old Zelda games, like you mashed that and he was doing all these bad slash combos. 
And uh, yeah, so what 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 are your thoughts on the combat? Did like, yeah, it as you said, it has a lot of there are a lot of little systems and nice elegance to the design. Where say your weapon is about to break, if you throw it at an enemy, then it'll actually do extra damage if it does mm. smash when it hits them. Um, but uh, and uh, other things like you say the the interactive interactivity of the environment you can set a field on fire and then suddenly like the entire place is torched and you know that's an extra element to the fight um there's boulders you can move you have a bomb and you have kinesis and uh the ice ability like the 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 abilities that you have with the sheikah slate Mm. they're also in a recharge which means you'll you'll always have them unlike in the other games where you could actually run out of bombs and then you know that's that's one option that's gone for you to use in combat so they do a lot to polish up the combat in some ways, but in other ways, like when you get to the to the down to it, like you are just swinging a sword. And I know you could say that about lots of games, but here it really is just right, left, right, mm. left, right. Um, they do change the the targeting is changed slightly, which I think is interesting, just in terms of a in a game design sort of heritage. Is that like obviously Ocarina pioneered the Z targeting, um which is very influential and, as we said, has, I think, been bested by other games since. But here, you still obviously lock on, but it's a bit more... It's less uh, focused just on Link and the enemy that you're fighting, if that makes sense. So it almost feels like in Ocarina, there are two modes. You're either exploring or you're aiming. Whereas here, the aiming matches in more with the inv- with the uh, exploration i think because you can still see more of what's going on around you it doesn't completely like it doesn't go over the shoulder the way it might in other games so you can have a, a better view of the the arena that you're fighting in which might be helpful if you can see something in, in the environment to help you um so there are lots of things that are done to you know um add sort of enhance the combat but at the end of the day i do think especially when you get to the final hours of the game and i should say i played the game for 200 hours i've never i'm sure near the near the end there i was thinking okay i'm ready to wrap this up but i was able to go for 200 hours without being too you know jaded with the combat but it does eventually just turn into you have all the best swords you cycle through them because they break um and it's the same thing over and over um there's a parry system like uh, as adam was saying or you were saying adam um don't know if i i did like parrying i think you can parry the the guardian lasers yeah um there's also the perfect dodge the parry oh where yeah you, yeah i forgot about that yeah which is which is cool the only thing is it's a bit finicky on how it actually activates i thought it was just dodge the last second but that doesn't always happen or that doesn't always work um and it can be really like exploitable, which can be fun. I love the effect of it goes into slow motion yeah. and you can see the enemy's neck like being bashed in as you're like uh you're hitting them with the sword. Uh but it's not like overall, it's not it's a fine combat system. I don't think it's bad, but it's not yeah, yeah. even yeah. within the Zelda series, I'm sure there are better. I've heard Twilight Princess is very has very um has a very good combat system or lots of options. So, yeah, that's that's all I'll say about it. That oh, again, in Tears of the Kingdom, I'm sure they'll have all sorts of ways to. Yeah, you're gonna attach a mushroom to your arse and fart on someone or something, <laughs> something like that. There's gonna be some interesting stuff in that game. So, uh, I'm trying to think. Did we miss anything? Um. I don't know, because it's very... It's funny, because I've played the game for so long, for 200 hours, but a lot of it is... Well, what I will say, Breath of the Wild is a game where I always do want to go back to, or over the years have planned to go back to, and it it almost feels like... I don't know if this will make any sense. It feels like a warm blanket or something, where it's a game where I'll go back and, like, oh, uh, the Great Plateau, and it's a game that I can just take at my own pace and not feel very... uh, pressure to do anything and i'm just i'm so glad that it's something that i'll always be able to go back to and that it exists i know it's it sounds really dopey saying stuff like that but it is a i have very positive memories with the game and 
the things that we've mentioned here that are issues like the combat and such and maybe that they haven't fully utilized what they could with the the physics and chemistry or that the dungeons could use a you know a redo like they're not terrible issues you know they are they're things to improve upon but overall i think it's a a really great game i'm trying to think of if there's anything particularly that i suppose there's lots to explore but part, it, it's not always very what's the word developed like there are castles that you can climb up but you can't really go in them or you can't really see a story told about wh- who who used this castle or is there any evidence of um wars that happened in the past sometimes there are that like, yeah, people yeah, have men- yeah you know what i mean like sometimes people have mentioned you can see in um certain villages that there are arrows next to the sign which either suggests someone is like using it for target practice or have they been under attack you know there is stuff like that but i think there could be more of that uh you can climb up um a guard tower and there are windows but you can't go in the windows they're just there they're, it's like they're just textured on so that's something actually just cause has an issue with as well where it's so it's vast and there's so many systems but unlike in a gta for example and i've always preferred just cause to gta i know they're they're very different in what they're, they're trying to do but i i just find just cause more interesting but gta is a lot better with going into buildings actually being a living breathing world and breath of the wild is a living breathing world like you can just stay completely still and you'll see things moving the wind the the grass moving there'll be different weather um but i think hopefully they do more to you know develop the history of this world the story there is a story in the game it's not that big of a deal i mean they have voice acting now and you know it's taken a little more seriously but the story is still broadly speaking you know it's just a zelda story um trying to think because i don't want to leave anthony out um oh i mean you, we could probably sit here and talk for about two or three hours you know there's there's yeah. a lot like if we really want to get into it but uh yeah i i, I don't really have much more to say i mean Breath of the Wild is, regardless, was like with the Resident Evil 4 discussion that we did. It's like, all of these little issues that we're calling out was only because we're trying to find issues. Or not trying to find, but you know what I mean. Like, like you obviously, no game is perfect. Like, there's going to be things that you don't like or systems that could be developed more. But, like, the takeaway is Breath of the Wild is, like, like a groundbreaking open world game. Like, it was revolutionary for the genre. And you can and- see that in, in just... In just something as simple, I know Just Cause had this, but Breath of the Wild was kind of the game. Like, something as simple as having a hand glider. Like, some open world games had it, but now, since Breath of the Wild, every open world game has it. And to be honest, every open world game has to have something like that, in my eyes. Yeah, that's fair. I will say Just Cause 2, I think, has done it better than any game I've ever ever play but it it, it's sort of like the apple effect in tech where lots of companies can do these things well but it's not until apple does it that yeah it takes off which is always a bit i mean okay fair enough apple usually do it well same nintendo usually do it well but i always feel a bit like i feel bad for the poor guys that have actually took the risk of the start but you are right it's it's influential in that sense um i have a question for you adam as someone who's played a lot of zelda games what's your thought on the concern some people might have that this is Zelda now, like going forward, AAA Zelda is like this. It's not going to be the older uh, dungeon style, like the the pre Breath of the Wild Zelda, if you know what I mean. Do you think that's an issue, or do you think they'll go back to that style at all for mainline games, uh, or will it just be? I'm I'm not sure if they'll ever go back to it. I, I mean, if they really wanted, see, I don't mind a series innovating and kind of moving away from what. I like it because, to be honest, like Zelda has been the same since it came out. Like since whenever, whenever the first Zelda launched, probably about eighty six or something like that. Like it's been, you go to dungeons, you get blah 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 item in this thing, you'll get a boomerang which will help you in the next one. In the next one, you'll get a hook shot that'll help you in the next one. So even though the games feel new, and they do small innovations, especially obviously going from two D to three D, but like after Majora's Mask. Zelda has stayed a same, like a, a pretty samey game. Like, there's nothing wrong with that, but in my eyes, Brett, like I, I'm so glad that they did Breath of the Wild because, at the very least, 
we know that they can do like we know that if Brett I know some people you know oh this isn't Zelda blah 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 but we know at the very least that if this is the future for Zelda it's in good hands like it's not like they're they're trying to change the formula but fucking it up big time you know yeah it's it's still there now do I think there's still a place for the old Zelda games I do and it would be cool if you know they got like a Nintendo not not a B team because I don't really think Nintendo have B teams but imagine they did like a smaller Zelda game they did a four dungeon 10 hour 10 or 12 hour long Zelda game that was like in the traditional style or they reserved the traditional overworld with dungeons for 2D Zeldas and then they came out with a brand new 2D Zelda in that style I think that's how I'd like to see it because like or what they can do here, here's another thing is whatever they if they do like a new game after Tears of the Kingdom and it's not like a sequel to Tears of the Kingdom uh, just have it the same formula as Breath of the Wild but put more time and effort into the four dungeons of the overworld and then it's like you, you get kind of the best of both worlds where the people who who like the the open world exploration can do that. But then also for the people that want to just go in four dungeons and then a final boss, they will still be there. And they will also be of similar quality to the other games because obviously, as we said, the dungeons of this game just aren't the same as, as previous games. So I, 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 per- I personally like the direction they're taking in. I know... Uh, to be honest, I think most people think that as well. There's uh, from from who I've heard talk about the games, like it's you know not not that many people are concerned over the future of Zelda. Yeah, that's again as, as someone who's not, I haven't played a lot of the other games, but it's not like Nintendo clearly care. Do you know, it's Nintendo. Like you can trust them usually to, for the most part, treat these franchises well. Um. I do think, I I mean I I love Ocarina. It's I if I was doing a ranking, I remember putting it somewhere like my fifth favorite game of all time, and that was I didn't play it until twenty sixteen, so I don't have nostalgia for it. I I just played it straight up, and I was like, this is one of the most incredible games I've ever played. Um, it was the game that got me into wanting to do the stuff that we're doing now, like talking about games yeah. and wanting to write about game, you know, and such. Um, something that like other franchises that I really enjoyed didn't necessarily get me to do. So I love Zelda in that sense. But Ocarina and Majora I enjoyed. But then as I said, Twin uh or uh Wind Waker, Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword, they they're just so I don't know that the core the core formula I think is so, is sound and solid, but it's just how it was being done with 3D Zeldas. I think it needed a breath of fresh air like breath of the wild so again i it's you might listen to this if you're a big zelda ha- head and just think well who are you to talk about this when you don't have that history with the series and okay fair enough but i will say i played zelda breath of the wild for 200 hours i can't see myself playing any of the others for that length maybe ocarina through replays or whatever but breath of the wild got me interested in um in the franchise the same way resident evil 4 did for resident evil symphony of the night did for castlevania though i was into castlevania before then but like these other games that in other fr- series that get a bit of a dunking on because they're different or that they take the series in a different direction eventually i think certain series need to like how many franchises out there would kill to have the amount of longevity that zelda has had and the amount of consistent releases i don't mean like there are certain franchises like pac-man or something that's really old but there was like a 25 year gap between games if you know what i mean yeah zelda's consistently had it just like mario and sonic and castlevania well castlevania is a bit you know there are very few franchises that get that so you know i i do think there's a future for the old zelda in in terms of 2d and such and i would i'd still like them to do 3d ones i always want there to be for franchises to feel like they can try whatever it is, you know, let's have a retro one. Let's have a, yeah. you know, this Breath of the Wild style one. I can see the issue where people might think that is it going to be like an arms race escalation where Nintendo has to keep going bigger and bigger. 
they seem to have sidestepped it for this game for tears of the kingdom though because it seems like they've, they're well it is the same map but they seem to be developing a, an over map and an under map like an underworld map and an overworld and obviously these new systems so it could be nintendo being nintendo again and they're able to just sidestep issues that trip up every other developer in the yeah. industry because <laughs> <laughs> they're just nintendo i mean they have at this stage they have i know they're a really old company but in terms of gaming they have what is it 45 years 50 years heritage yeah. some of these people have been there for that long so um that's my two cents that i'm excited i really love breath of the wild it has issues but it's a comfort blanket for me it's a game that i'll always think about going back to play and going back and such and it's an evergreen game it's something i think everyone can enjoy for all time no matter when it is and i'm looking forward to tears of the kingdom and i do want to go back and play the other games i really should it's a big you know it's a big, no, i only uh, need to play majora's mask. mask that's the only one that's required and i will i will um but beyond that i can't think of any uh I, there was something i thought that i i was i wanted to say but i can't remember it now so i'll either it probably wasn't that important or i've covered it or i'll remember it long after this recording is done so yeah. i can just comment on it or yeah. something on the video i'll put you in a in a short on the channel david <laughs> okay so david before we wrap it up have a yes rapid fire Eintach. okay are you ready david i am bow or sword sword left-handed link or right-handed link oh left-handed link yeah, of course okay. uh, green link or blue link green link okay what's your favorite ability like the uh, cryon cryonesis or whatever it was called cryosis and stasis and all that stasis i think okay uh what is who is your favorite of the champions oh you don't need names if you don't remember them. Just I, um, they're all great, but I love the bird guy because he's such an asshole. Yeah, he is. Yeah, <laughs> the, the Goran one's my favorite. I forget his name. And he has that. He has that cool. Uh, that cool moment with like his ancestor. Yeah, I actually got kind of teary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did I. Okay. Uh, favorite champion ability. Ravali's Gale is yeah, now ready. Yeah, yeah. That that's that's the only answer for that. And I think that's the final one, David. That that's the that's the the rapid fire questions. I love the rapid fire. Oh no, uh, one more one. Shield slide or hang glider? Oh, Adam Feck. That, that, one's, that one's quite tough. I'll go with shield slide just because with the hang glider, there's games like Just Cause 2, etc. that also have them. Whereas how many very, other yeah, games yeah, have a shield uh, slide? Yeah, very few And games. the shield slide's fun. Yeah, yeah. You can disrespect the high rule shield by just... Yeah, just absolutely trampling destroying down it. You just went on a big <laughs> quest to get the thing and then just... <laughs> oh, straight God. down the mountain. Okay. Well, I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, I mean, if you're still or listening, I guess. Cause, I mean, why would anybody watch? This is just going to be gameplay and us talking. So yes. uh, I really appreciate you watching. If you have gotten this far, please let us know what your favorite memories of Breath of the Wild are. And also, if you've pre-ordered Tears of the Kingdom, because I have and David has, because Smiths typically send it out a day early, and I hope they do. Indeed. The only issue is if I stream it a day early and Nintendo see me, will they send people after me and copyright my video? They might do. There'll be a knock at the door in the middle of the night. Yeah. And be shot through the window yeah. like Resident Evil Village at the start. And then all I hear is, woohoo, just outside the window. <laughs> <laughs> just them jumping away. Okay. <laughs> well, that's another great end. Thank you, David, for being on the channel. Uh, David still doesn't have a channel. I've been pushing him to make one. He I know. Writes, I'm getting closer. He I writes scripts. So give David some, if you're still watching, give David some encouragement. Yeah. So yeah. I actually have finished scripts, which is the craziest thing. If, if anyone else on YouTube heard this, is like, you've fi scripts finished. And they're just sitting there. Yep. So I need to get on that. Well, hopefully I will. There we have Bread of the Wild. Thank you everybody for watching. Uh, subscribe and like the video and join Discord. Blah, blah, blah. Loads of stuff on Tears of the Kingdom coming. So thank you all for watching and listening. And thank you, David, for joining. Thank you very much. Thank I'll you. See man. you all on the next video. Goodbye. Bye.